Uh, hi, I am Kathy Bond. I'm one of the co-chairs for the Seattle in 2025 World Con bid. And I'm Sunny Jim. I'm the other co-chair. And the last time that uh, World Con was in Seattle was in six, 1961. Not 61. Wait, did I say 1961 or did I say 61? Okay. Anyways, uh, 1961. So it is definitely time for it to come back. The last time it was there, the Space Needle was not even completed yet. Uh, there was not a monorail, which is a fantastic mode of transportation. Uh, so, and many of us weren't even alive then. So it's time for the Worldcon community to come back to Seattle and see how much has changed and see our fantastic uh, Fanish community in the Pacific Northwest. So our facility is the brand new Seattle Convention Center, recently rebranded from Washington State Convention Center, uh, the Seattle Convention Center Summit Building. This is a brand new building. It's not even quite open yet. It'll be open early next year. And it's really the perfect size for us. Um, I have often said that if someone came to me, who has been an event planning professionally for over 30 years now, and asked me to design a facility for a Worldcon, this is what I would ask for. Um, we're just thrilled with how it works. Um, you can go forward. Uh, these are all architectural renders, because of course, we can't go inside. It's not finished. Um, but it's all very light and airy with wide corridors and great spaces. Keep going. Um, this is what it looked like a year ago. We were actually able last November to go in and do a hard hat tour, which was super fun. Um, on one end of the building, the walls had paint and there was trim around the windows and they were really polishing it up. And on the other end of the building, there were no walls. It wasn't as fun to take a picture of the completed walls, so that, that's why we took this picture. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Going. And uh, here's what it looked like last week. So it is just about done. Um, we've got some floor plans, which we're just going to kind of zip through because we don't need to get in the weeds here. But it's basically five levels plus a basement, um, lots of exhibit space, going two full levels of these breakout rooms that are endlessly configurable, a giant rooftop garden that's really lovely. And and then this is the top floor where you have the big ballrooms for large events. And also on the, the ballroom level floor, uh, that's also where you have the views. Uh, you can see down to the sound from there. Uh, it will be spectacular at sunset if we all make it that long because sunset's a little bit late in August. Um, hotels, we have, uh, currently we're in negotiation Sorry, can you get closer to the mic, please? Sorry. Uh, currently we're in negotiation with 12 hotels that are within a five-block walk or less. Uh, the range is 228 to 279 a night. The average is about 250. This is Seattle in August. It is peak tourist season, and uh, they're not hurting to find people to fill those rooms, which is why they're on the high side. Um, however, if price is a, is a factor for you, a quick ride on public transit or light rail gets you to neighborhoods with significantly lower rates, and we will be helping uh, our members find those opportunities. Um, because our convention space isn't relying on making a room block, it's fine with us if there are cheaper options elsewhere for you. There's also, a, of course, a thriving Airbnb market in the area that's, that's pretty useful. Why Seattle in August? Uh, I mean, actually, that, that's pretty accurate. It's gorgeous. Uh, the city is super fun. There's lots of tourism, lots of nature, lots of science and technology. Mara mentioned there's the Museum of Popular Culture. Inside that museum is the Science Fiction Hall of Fame uh, and a lot of uh, really fun permanent exhibits. And they bring in traveling exhibits quite, quite often uh, that explore genre, uh, genre interests. Uh, there's the Museum of Flight, which is in between uh, where uh, SeaTac Airport is and downtown Seattle. Uh, and we probably will, will arrange for some tours there because we have contacts uh, that can give you some nice behind the scenes thing. Uh, we possibly also might arrange a tour of a Boeing, one of the Boeing facilities uh, because they're still in Seattle. They have not moved to Chicago yet or <laughs> South Carolina, uh, despite best efforts. Um, and there's t just, Amazing, amazing things uh, to see both in the city and if you are planning tourist events uh, on either side of the Worldcon, 
uh, getting out to the peninsula. We're not that far from going down to Portland if if that if uh, weird uh, hips or up to Vancouver, BC. But for Portland, if weird hipster food cart food carts are your thing, that's the city you should go to. Yeah, and there's there's pretty decent transit around the Close city. The there's pretty decent transit around the city for the tourist things that you are most likely to want to see. The historic district is also really fun. There's a lot of nature stuff really close by and easily accessible. Um, if you're into hiking or camping or just you know sitting on a bus or a boat and letting someone show you the beautiful places, all of those are easily accessible. All right, so uh, fan culture in Seattle. There are uh, a lot of different fan groups and fan conventions in the area, and we are starting to uh, partner partner with several of them to to build uh, to build our Worldcon. Uh, our home convention for a significant chunk of the big committee is uh, NorwestCon, which is every Easter weekend uh, down in the SeaTac DoubleTree. Uh, hotel, but we also are working with uh, people over at Geek Girl Con. They're a relatively recent uh, newcomer on the stage, uh, focused on uh, empowering women in science fiction. Uh, then other cons in the area would be Orca Con. They do they focus on tabletop games. We have some biggies uh, in the area with uh, Pax West, uh, Sakura Con, Emerald City Comic Con, and then uh, we also have. Uh, weird. I, I mean, I'm going to say weirder with love, with love for anybody here and respect and respect. Uh, but horror is not my thing. Uh, you know, but there's also Crypticon, and then you know we have our our tech giants in the area: Microsoft, Adobe, Google, Facebook hasn't laid everybody off yet. Um, <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> there's also a uh, thriving games industry in the region. <coughs> Um, we're not necessarily a hotbed for comics creators, but we're a huge, huge incubator of games and gaming companies, um, both in digital, tabletop, RPG, people like Neontic, uh, Big Fish, Green Ronin, Twitch, PopCap, Bungie, WotC, Pathfinder. I mean, if, if you've been anywhere near games, you've been talking about Seattle-produced Seattle, Seattle -produced products. And so uh, with that, I guess we will we'll close our part of the presentation before questions with uh, join us, please, please join us. Um, we are actively building, uh, building our team at this point and are interested to hear from you about uh, how, you, how you'd like to, to help us out and be part of our community of, I, I like to say, you know, especially in the Pacific Northwest where uh, very maker inspired. So we're a community of doers and learners and participants, and we want to invite you to to come be that with us. Great, thank you. Uh, same drill as before. If you have questions, please write them down and bring them up here. I am remiss, by the way. I should have mentioned that uh, most of our bidders have prepared uh, responses to the bidder questionnaire. Uh, Buffalo certainly has one. Seattle has one, and they and the others uh, who have submitted them are available via the Grenadine page for this uh, event, this session. Um, so questions already. As I promised, everybody gets the same question. How much of your programming will be streamed and or recorded? So what I know at this point is that we will likely have at least three panels uh, that would be streamed at any given time from on site. Uh, we will likely have our large programs streamed as well. And then it, we will have a virtual program in addition to our in-person program, which will be as large as our virtual team makes it. Uh, I have another question that will be asked of all the bids, so get ready. Um, and I ask that you keep your responses relatively brief to a very complex question. What is the human rights situation in your host country? I'm going to let you take this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you all. Um, and brief. Uh, I guess, I mean, what is the human rights situation in the United States? I mean, the, the cynical leftist, uh, leftist activist in me wants to say, not so great. Um, but that's not, that's not also a complete answer. Uh, I would say you know, the city of Seattle ha has a lot of local initiatives and a lot of local regulations and laws in place. Uh, to make the city as welcoming as possible to as broad and inclusive a group as possible. 
Uh, we have mandated uh, uh, multi-gender restrooms uh, for for trans people, uh, single single stalls. That's that's mandated in all city facilities, and anybody working in the in the city. Uh, we have we are a sanctuary city. Um, we you know so so I guess do with uh, do with that as as you will. What are the dates of your convention? Ah, that was on the slide that, that didn't work so well. Uh, August 13th through 17th, uh, 2025, that is what we are uh, basically uh, contracted with with the convention center at this point. Okay. Uh, how late does public transit run since the chief hotels are on? Uh, the light rail, uh, light rail runs until 3 a.m., takes a break and restarts at 4.45 a.m. What is the people capacity of the convention center? Um, off the top of my head, I believe it's around 12. Yeah. Um, as we've been talking to them, we've That's been... 12,000. 12,000. 12, yeah, 12,000. <laughs> as we've been in negotiation with them, we've been talking about a convention. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we were saying that our target was in the 6 to 8 range, and they were like, yeah, totally. And it's clear that 10 would fit just nicely in the top five floors without using the, the lower level. And, and that's my next question is, are you assuming that the convention center is vastly larger than you need, you'll be giving away other space to other events, correct? Mm, it, no, but because because we're in the new expansion, we're in the new expansion building, and that's so there is the summit expansion building and then there is the what they're calling the arch building which is a horrible name for the buildings for starters for for the main convention center we and then they also have where geek girl con is the conference center uh, which, which is which building. is also arch which is also arch at this point anyways um, anyway, in the summit building we are taking all of the floors except the basement theoretically the convention has told us they could rent that out they feel disinclined to do so uh, since we would be in the entire rest of the building. So likely it will just be us in the summit building if for whatever reason uh, we became hugely popular and like 12,000 of you wanted to come join us. First we would have a panic attack uh, in the back and then uh, we would rent, uh, we'd be able to rent more space in the arch building uh, in order to expand. Got it. Well, well, we'd be able to go downstairs, but then if we needed to get lar even larger the in the arch building. Okay. Okay. Uh, with that many levels in the convention center, what is the elevator situation? So this is where this is where I was saying if I could design a building for a world con, this is what I would have asked for. There are elevators in multiple corners, multiple bank, you know, banks of multiple elevators in multiple corners of the building. There's also that side that goes kind of up, and there were some various photos that you could see it, is a multi-escalator bank. But there is also a secondary multi-escalator bank on the other side of the building. So there's two full sets of escalators, one giant set of extra wide stairs for those who want to just run up and down the stairs and not clog up the escalators and elevators, and then multiple banks of elevators, plus a giant service elevator for us to move stuff up and down as staff to not clog up the publicly accessible elevators. And I think it's a secondary set of service elevators, if I remember correctly. So like, there, there are a lot of elevators, uh, elevators in this building. And just to, the, the rendering we showed of, of the, the, it's a, called the hill climb uh, in the building. The, the hard hat tour giver was very proud of it uh, because there is some, there is a infamously in downtown Seattle, a hill climb, you climb up you can climb up and get fantastic views, and the hill climb sort of replicates that if you want, but also will give you views uh, down Pike or Pine? Pike. Down Pike uh, to the sound Straight as well. Straight to the water. Straight to the water. Yeah. Uh, will you have tax exempt status with the city of Seattle and or the state of Washington in order to? So we, we are uh, incorporated as Seattle Genre Alliance. We have been uh, for about a year and a half now. You can. Uh, email us and we'll send you our paperwork. So we are a nonprofit uh, Washington Washington State Corporation. We also are registered as a 501c3 nonprofit with the federal government. And uh, all of that paperwork is available um, if you want to see it. And I believe the question was specific to city and state taxes. No. Yes. They're not exempt from city and state taxes. 
Um, we are not, no nonprofits are exempt in the state of Washington from state and local taxes. Okay, there are two big events for the Worldcon, the Masquerade and the Hugo Awards. Do you know which nights you're going to hold those events? And where? And where? They will be held on the traditional nights of Friday and Saturday. Um, they will either be in the large ballroom on the top floor, or if we get large enough to uh, afford it, uh, if we go back to the very first slide of with rendering of the, the building. Uh, no, next slide. Or keep, going back. Go, keep going back. That one. Oh, sorry. My bad. You can see that sign across the street. That is the historic Paramount Theater. So if we get large enough, we would like to look at that theater to run those events in. Um, but otherwise, if you go forward a couple slides, what am I looking for? Uh, the, the top floor. This room right here uh, would be where the, the theater is. Back here, there would be offices for, for uh, the, the, the staff of the event. Um, the freight elevators are on this side, and uh, yeah. I think, and you can sort of see some of the banks of the elevators here and here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, how big are the elevators, and are they able to fit more than one Moby each? Yes. Uh, yet yeah, they are able to fit more than one Moby each. They are brand new, brand new and uh, I mean, quite quite spacious. I just want to talk about scale in this picture a little bit. Um, this hallway here is as wide as this room. For the benefit of people streaming, we're looking at the level um, the five ballroom. This slide. is the level five. This hallway, and there's this kind of hallway on every floor. That hallway is wider than this room. Um, it is a significant space where they can set up pop-up restaurants and whatnot. There has been no U.S. Worldcon over 5,100 attendees since LA Con 4 in 2006. How many attendees do you need to be financially secure and to afford the full facility space? So we can, uh, we can afford the full facility space uh, with, the, with the average of what, of, what the of what previous U.S. World Cons have been. We are extremely hopeful and, and with, with, some, with some backing uh, to our hope. Uh, that we will be able to get a lot of locals because Worldcon has not been to, been in the Seattle area for a very long time. There's a lot of excitement uh, from people who have wanted to go to Worldcon but cannot just they just really can't can't justify the five six hour flight uh, to get to get someplace else. So uh, we feel pretty confident that that we will we will make our membership numbers to to afford the space. Um. I, I think you've answered this already, but we have the question. Date and days of week, please. When do you start now? August 13th through August 17th, and uh, 2025. And if someone has a calendar. I'm looking right now. Uh, the 13th is a Wednesday, and the 17th is a Sunday. Yeah, so that's so a, Wednesday a, through Sunday. Wednesday, we'll Wednesday through Sunday. We went back and forth a little bit with the convention center on that, which is why I was like, I, I can't remember. What, what did we land on? Okay, what is the situation for load in and load out for things like dealer's room and art show? All right, so if I go back down here, that lower picture is our exhibit space. It is uh, humongous, but is dividable with air walls, so we will be able to uh, design it so that the dealer's room and art show can be locked off securely at night. Um, there is a, a variety of freight elevators. There's also a loading dock. The, the space across the street is also owned by the convention center and has a ramp that goes down from across the street into the lower level and uh, spirals down in there and has uh, the first floor there, the upper slide, um, shows also there's about a 240 space parking garage in that first floor, which we're um, talking to the convention center about ways in which we might use that. And certainly dealer load in and load out is one of our chief concerns. Great. Thank you for your presentation and your question answering. Um, we are done. All right. If you have any more questions, feel free to talk to one of us uh, during this weekend. And uh, we have the ability to pre-support us on our website if you would, if you would like to.
or or in person, we can we can take your money from you in person. It's that's not a problem. <laughs> Um, but for those of you online, uh, seattlein2025.org is, uh, is our website. So ask questions later. You ask yep. all the questions now. Um, excellent. Thank you. A uh, reminder that this convention for 2025 will be selected at this year's Worldcon in Shanghai.